So here we are today with Dr. Lipov. It's nice to finally meet you. you. Appreciate it. And Thanks I've for seen, coming. Yes, thank you so much. And I'm so looking forward to doing this procedure. And I've seen you on um, the, the doctor's show. How many times have you been on the doctor's show now? 16. 16 times now. And so can you tell us this procedure, what we're doing? I've suffered from depression for a long time. And I'm doing going publicly with this, obviously, to one of my friends. And a lot of anxiety. A lot of anxiety, ADHD, you know, kind of type things. Uh, so can you share with what we're doing exactly? Well, today what we're doing is basically blocking your sympathetic fibers, which are in the neck on the right side. Actually, the first publication about using stellate psychiatrically was in Cleveland Clinic in 1947 for depression. Interesting. Kind of interesting. Yes. We've been primarily using it for PTSD and anxiety relation issues. Uh, also, um, we've tried it on postpartum depression. That seems to have worked on that. Very nice. But for you today, we are doing the first phase of the block and see if you have a, if you feel a difference. Okay. If not, then we go higher up. It's all C3 and that works a lot of times. It has more oomph or more uh, impact. And no one does that C3. That's that's a technique that uh, Dr. Lipov is one of the unique individuals in the country. Is it a pen that you have on this then, the procedure? Not, not, you can't really have a pen on procedure. No, that, that, yeah, that doesn't get patented. Um, but sequential block has never been done. Okay. So people have done C3 in Europe. Yes. Not much in this country, but doing it in sequence for PTSD, I was definitely the first one. To you know, it. it's very interesting that you work out this area because I tell, I've told my doctors previously, I'm like, man, I just feel this pain, like this stress that really weighs on this part. Right. When I'm really experiencing my symptoms at the worst, it really feels, and here's, and so like, is an adrenal thing, or but it feels more on the sides and stuff. Would this have be part of that a little bit? You think? Yeah. So I, we had a patient that was a special ops guy involved in some really nasty stuff. So he had severe PTSD and he also had back pain. So we did the shot, PTSD went away and his muscle pain went away completely. Because if you think about it, if you're tense, if you're yeah. running away from the tiger, right? right? Your muscles are all tight. And I feel mine tight uh, right, right here. And right. People, Honestly. people carry their stress in different places. Like my wife carries with the shoulders, you carry your neck, some people lower back. But it's tightness from that, uh -huh. yeah. And it's John Bryan right. was part of the U.S. military, United States Army. Eight, 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 eight years. Years. Service. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. My father's a colonel and stuff. We went to Vietnam, so I was raised in a military family. And um, yeah, and, and what I've also noticed is with the stress and stuff like this, like my voice actually, I feel like it changes. I don't feel right. so confident in my speaking uh, ability. Because you're almost like you're being strangled, right? And I don't know if you guys out there who are watching this video can relate to this, but if it is a symptom that you're noticing, maybe it's something to look into. You know, so I'm just very interested. I'm Dr. Philip Devine. I'm a neuroscientist. Uh, uh, Dr. Lipov is a physician. He's an anesthesiologist who does the procedure. But we have brain mapping, which John Ryan has gotten our brain maps prior to, and we'll get them afterwards. So we can actually look at changes in certain pathways, which Dr. Lipov and I are studying to look at the impact empirically of, of this t a particular procedure and how it reboots the brain. And then also, some forms that you filled out this morning, anxiety and, and depression forms. What, so we'll what look scanning at those. have I done exactly with this? We've done that. Well, you've done above and beyond what most <coughs> people come in to do because we were doing some more sophisticated diagnostics. But we did uh, a whole series of MRI, including fMRI, MRI spectroscopy, uh, and other other components of the MRI. Two and a half hours in the yeah, Exactly. So we looked at uh, the chemical <laughs> signatures, the structural the functional uh, systems within your brain and so uh, you know uh, certain things that also relate to the the type of issues that you were describing so you have been super scanned and you have been uh, given electrical ele super -sized <laughs> electrical maps so typically most people wouldn't get that type of workup but because of the the length of time and complications involved. And in insurance does it cover a lot of this, so I've paid out of pocket for these procedures. Which exactly. Is, Unfortunately, exactly. new technologies and advanced procedures, even though they're safe and efficacious, take sometimes decades or, or a decade or more to become part of a CPT code and part of a code yes. to be reimbursed through insurance. So that's the downside. And we're trying to make the public more aware, have insurance companies look at this, uh, and maybe capitate some of these procedures Especially with such a quick process of what we're doing right here. Yeah, so I, I, I want to actually two things I want to bring up. Sure. Thank you. Thank yes, you. Yes, uh, the procedure, if you look at all the conventional therapeutics, they all take a long time to work for PTSD or depression. 
Right, exactly. Pills this usually take worse months. than you've ever. If like, ever. You've ever. Yeah. With, no, with, with a lot, lot of side effects, effects right? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you have weight side effects, sexual side effects, sleeping side effects, all type of stuff. Right. I'm not saying you. No, and I won't be taking those pills because I have in the past. Exactly. I've tried them. Exactly. I've tried numerous of them. They're horrible. I don't like them. Yeah. If you look at, uh, there's a study um, by Dr. Crystal from Yale, yeah. and he basically looked at everything, all the drugs used for PTSD that said none of them work. All, all the drugs, $8 billion a year. But still, the pharmaceutical industry still pumping pushes it out. you, pumping it out like that. So yeah. I just want to say, I know you got more to say here, but I want to say that's why we're filming this and that's why I'm here today. I want to document this and help bring help other people. Is my intention here in promoting your guys' organization because I work with the best right here. And so. the fancy Thank name for this is... is right for it. <laughs> yeah. But you want to see more of it. The ahead. fancy name for this is non-invasive minimally invasive or non-invasive, depending on the techniques used, neuromodulation. So we're changing brain functions through a non-medication use in which... Non-pharmaceutical. Non-pharmaceutical use in which individuals yeah. normally aren't compliant because all the side effects Dr. LeBub right. and, and John were mentioning, and the fact that the main effect oftentimes is not there as well. So here is a procedure, short-term procedure, long-term impact, and we can talk to John Ryan afterwards and get some input as to how he's feeling about sure. it. Last thing I want to tell you is kind of interesting. So I have a degree in genetics from college. Mine's like not psychology. psychology. Actually, <laughs> trying to figure out what I've been going through my entire life. Makes sense, but, here's, <laughs> but let me tell you why you and I are kind of similar. So my father was a colonel in the Red Army. You get that? No. And growing up, at least was my What's father. The Red Army? That's the Russian, Russian, Russian Army. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah. But I know he, 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 he had a lot of PTSD from World War II. So I don't know, like your father's PTSD state? Or no, he didn't, no. He didn't have any? Yeah, he's an engineer. Oh, well, having, being brought up in this, my family was very interesting because the childhood you, can, you go through changes your brain waves. Exactly, exactly. But I wrote a paper on epigenetics, how there is actually a number of things that tells us the brain actually changes, the DNA changes in your body following trauma. Mm -hmm. My father had the same thing. He was in the Marines, World War II. Same type of situation. Very I had my spelling. Oh, you did? Well, that's why you're so cool now. I used to be like that until these changes. So epigenetics, it can go positive or negative. You can go forward and negative and positive. Yes. Yeah, exactly. There was a lady, uh, Dr. Bloodburn, who's uh, lab I cooperate with. She wrote the paper and actually got a Nobel Prize for doing... Um, meditation and yoga, and actually changing DNA back, epigenetic changes. The, the book I actually was reading on the flight over here, it, it's about living in the moment. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, we can either think in the past, we can think in the future, but living in the moment, this is a very important place to live. And in, 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 in a day and age, you know, we're doing a lot of neurofeedback stuff together. I just bought this $21,000 plus device from him and stuff. But, you know, it's just with the technologies, the cell phones and the social media, we're going to be doing a video on later on today, um, how this is, you know, warping people's minds, the dopamine drips, um, and, you know, from g uh, gaming so much in social media. And these kids are having issues nowadays, right? Big time. So it's inter our That's goal is looking into how we can move forward in, in, in actually, like you said, the epigenetics moving forward to help these people get better. Absolutely. I was a school neuropsychologist. And my training is in clinical psychology and neuroscience. And uh, my doctorate's in uh, working in school systems and seeing the level of violence and, and mental health issues. I think many of which are precipitated by obviously broken down family and a lot of complicated issues. But video gaming, that gaming. Is ve has a very deleterious effect it changes the brain. Uh, on the brain. It, it, it puts them in a hyper alert, aggressive mode, and it's a chronic addictive kind of yeah. process. Yeah. So yeah. things yeah. like neurofeedback can actually work in a positive way with gaming to try to regulate as opposed to the type of... So we're talking about this also. So we're going to have a long-term relationship talking about this. Right. What, you know, in, 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 let's just talk about the suicide uh, risk real quick is on the rise massively lately. Right. This year, every year, is going up higher and higher. And I, right. and I think people can it's a contribution of a whole bunch of things. Maybe GMO foods. And maybe it could be, who knows, fluoride in the water. Who knows not to get all conspiracy theory You know, on top <laughs> of technology. It could be Wi-Fi signals coming in and all these things. You never know, right? How we're, our bodies are getting bombarded. Stress, medications. They've Stress identified like stuff. the... the uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, the National Institutes of Health identified over uh, 90 commonly used prescription medications that can precipitate depression and anxiety. Yeah, yeah so I actually saw that. So, 
I'm kind of curious. So suicide angle, if you're interested. Go ahead. I, mean, yes. I, I gave a presentation about it in 2015 in Canada, actually. It was called American Psychiatric Association. So basically, what's interesting is there are a couple of things that lead to suicide clearly. One, bad sleep pattern. You can't sleep well, especially if you have nightmares. Right. Also, if you have overreactivity. So if you're very impulsive. Impulsivity leads to suicide. Those are the two things that... But you have to it. ask what led to that right there, to that, to that. Well, it could lead to a lot of things. I'm just saying from my perspective, because the stelly injection, sympathetic blocks, actually work best on those two mm -hmm. features. Yes, the so revving like, up, yeah. the impulsivity, right. the lack of insight and poor judgment combined precipitate states where people hurt themselves or commit suicide. So this mechanism that's being addressed by the SGB actually reverses that. that I really, I really think this is it because I've always complained and no one ever had an answer I, that I get this in here and it's not like I'm yelling at a concert, it's just like I'm exhausted but my adrenal tests show up as normal and my thyroid and my, te I do testosterone inflation therapy and HGH, you know. You know it's neurological, so I appreciate it. We're looking forward to a successful okay, procedure, and we'll, we'll have some service. more. Yes, thank you all. So we'll awesome. see you soon. Okay, cool. We'll have a beautiful idea. There you go. <laughs>